0916 Azusa Jubilee, Los Angeles, California. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you very, thank you very kindly. It's indeed a privilege to be here in this marvelous Angeles Temple this afternoon in the celebration of this Azusa Street outpouring of the Holy Spirit. See so many people gathered out, still contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And we're trusting that through this great time of this week coming, where many anointed speakers will be speaking, that God will do the exceeding abundantly for us, that his presence will be with us at every meeting. And trusting that from this gathering will go forth an old-fashioned Pentecostal meeting that will sweep the world before the coming of our Lord Jesus. And now I know it's warm, and we'll go right straight to the word, reading out of the book of St. Luke, the first chapter, in the beginning of the 14th verse. I read this. Then he came to Nazareth, where he was brought up, and as the custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, and to proclaim deliverance to them that in captive. And may the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. What a privilege it is to be in Los Angeles today, knowing that many years ago, as the Spanish sailed up and down this west coast, founding this great spot here, that this little did they know that the great city will be here some day. And then to be here in the Angelus Temple today, which is an outstanding memorial to the full gospel age, and the celebration of the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Azusa Street 50 years ago, I was looking in the paper and seeing the picture of the old Azusa Street mission. And to just below it was a picture of this beautiful Angelus Temple, which is quite a long ways that the church has come from that day to this, from the old mission to this place. And I think the association has selected a wonderful place to hold this rally because this temple stands today as a memorial to a little mother who felt that down in her heart that Jesus Christ still lived and reigned, Mrs. McPherson. She sleeps in forest lawn today, her body, but her gallant soul is at rest with God, and partings leave behind her footprints on the sands of time. To be in the temple here with Brother McPherson, her son, and Brother T. Ford, and many of the other staff and the workers, and to see the members of this great fellowship gathering from all parts of the country to come in for this great rally. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to speak to you just this two nights or two times of service, and we all want to unite our hearts together in prayer to believe and to trust God for another great outpouring. God is just the same. He doesn't fail, and it's not exactly a jubilee of Azusa Street. It was when Jesus preached the acceptable year of the jubilee, was brought down at Pentecost, and has been ever since, and we're just continuing on the great jubilee that started some 1900 years ago, Pentecost, I'm so happy today to have permission to have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and to be a fellow worshipper of like precious faith as you all stand for today. Feel like one out of season because there is many here who was preaching the gospel before I was born, knowing that it was in 1906, I believe, when this great outpouring came to California. That was years before I was born. People are sitting here today who remember that. Many of them worshipped and, at that time, heroes of the faith, aging up, hairs turning grey. But I tell you, my brethren, there's a great reward laying at the other side when we pass over some day, seeing what it's cost down through the years, how I talked to people, how they laid out wet at night, walked on railroad tracks, picked up corn, broke it for their children, lived hard to see this great church prosper and come on. So I'm Glorious day, I hope to meet in another great jubilee when all the redeemed of the ages can stand on the rim of this earth singing the story of redemption when angels are gathered around the earth with bowed heads, not even knowing what we are talking about. They never did a redemption, but we poor lost sinners was redeemed by his grace, and we know 
what it means to sing the redemption story. And the song, what a great time that will be when we crown him the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And today my scripture reading comes from Christ where he entered the temple and said that he was to preach the acceptable year. And the anointing of the Lord was upon him. He read the book and sat down. It said precious words proceeded from his lips. Back in the Old Testament, there was a year called the year of Jubilee. It was the year that all of the captives could be set free. Every man that had been in captivity could go free. It has a great meaning to this day of what that stood for as a type. Now today, many hundred years has passed, but the same God that sent the Jubilee in them days is the same God who sends Jubilee today. All the people that had been captured and was in captivity, they are come an acceptable ear, and when the trumpet sounded, all the ones that were in captivity didn't have to pay any price, they could absolutely go free. They could drop their hoe if they were hoeing or whatever they were instrument they were working with and could go and be free. That was by choice. If they did not want to be free, then they would be called into the temple and their master would take an owl by the ear which would mark them to serve this master forever. And how typical that is of today and how typical it was of 50 years ago when the Holy Spirit first fell in that barn down there where I'm taught that it was a cow barn. When Jesus first came to the earth in the form of flesh, God, he was born in a manger and when he came to Los Angeles, he still came to a barn. And that's the humility of God bringing himself down in order to redeem us from sin. Then this person that was, did not want to go free, could have to be sealed a beautiful type today of the sealing of God or the marking of the beast, which has been so much disputed what it was. Now faith cometh the hearing, hearing of the word of God. And when we hear that we are free and refuse to act upon our freedom, then we will be sealed. To my opinion, to be sealed away from God is to receive the mark of the beast. For to hear is to receive. And when we hear that we are free, then we can accept it and be free. Now, when the hearer heard the jubilee sound, and if he didn't want to be free, then he had to be sealed. And it is today that when men and women hear this marvelous gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are at a place where you have been to make a choice. You can never hear it and be the same. If you accept it, you receive Christ. If you refuse it, you are sealed away from Christ. And it makes a difference of your attitude towards hearing of the word. And I was speaking this morning in a wonderful place here in the city, a tabernacle, and was speaking upon that very subject that God wants his church to be free. Many things have happened during these 50 years. Many people, believers, have been caught and taken captive by the world. Many people, denomination barriers, sometimes as separation fellowship and drawed barriers. I was thinking here not long ago, someone asked me, said, Brother Branham, what church do you belong to? I said, there's really only one church. The church means the called out. said, but I mean, what denomination do you belong to? I said, none of at the time, and yet all of them. Brother Shakira made a statement the other morning that has stuck with me. He said, Pentecost is not a denomination. It's an, not an organization. It is an experience with God that men and women receive. God, Methodists, Baptists, Presbyterians, and all can receive this experience when they hear the word and decide to act upon it. The Holy Ghost has been in the earth for nearly 2,000 years, and whosoever will may come and be partakers of it. And everyone that captured can be free when they hear the word. Now, if you refuse to, then it's shut up. Here, some time ago, I used to ride up here in Colorado quite a bit on a cattle ranch, and we grazed cattle up on the Arafaho forest, and every man that could had a ranch in the valley that could raise a ton of hay, could put a cow on the pasture for the summer. If the ranger stood and counted the cattle as they passed through, many times have I, with the little herds of cattle, go up there to put our cattle on the forest for the year. 
and I noticed them as they come through. They had different brands, like they were, well, the Lazy K, the Diamond T, many different brands as they passed through the gates. They were wearing different brands, but nothing went through that gate but registered Hereford. I think that's what it would be at the end of the road. God won't notice just what brand we got, but every man passes through is born again of the Spirit of God. No matter what brand you are wearing, just as long as you are a genuine believer, spirit-born saint of God, you'll go through the gate at that day, assures the world. What a beautiful picture. Then we noticed the cattleman's place out in there sometimes after they was all in the great forest to be grazing. Then they would take and have drip fences. Some were chosen to go in certain valleys to graze. And they'd put drift fences so that they could not get out of this certain place. But then at the end of the season, these drift fences was all taken down. And all the cattle got together to celebrate a great big jubilee. They were all halfords, so they all had a right to celebrate a jubilee. And I pray God that in this coming week that all the drift fences of denominations will be torn down and all the bond again children of God will be brought together in one great big Holy Ghost rally jubilee where they all get together again. Down along through the ages, down through the past 50 years, many things have happened in the churches. Many people have fallen away. We are sorry to say this, but today in this great fabulous temple, beautiful as it is, and we thank God for it, but I'm sure today that every believer along with Brother McPherson and all the rest of you will depart with everything we got and late on the altar of God for an old-fashioned firing of the Holy Ghost again like it was in the beginning. What we need is that today, my Christian friend, a jubilee time. Now the devil has taken many believers captive during this time. For instance, coldness and wildness has slipped into the church. Now we could take another subject, but I think myself as one of you together, the thing we are here for today is in celebration of the old-fashioned Holy Ghost revivals that we used to have, that I hear our fathers talk about, how the angels came down and sang in the meetings, and the power of God taken over, and the, and saints were born again, and great things happened, and it come from old-fashioned backwards, sky blue, sin-killing preaching, and the old Sassafras type, maybe men that didn't know their ABCs, but they know Christ and had the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's what we hunger for today is an old-fashioned baptism of the Holy Ghost and a pouring out of God's blessings back to the old line again. Many times that we let the world slip in, that's what, what's the matter with our churches today. We kindly let down a little bit here and there. The devil has come in from one place to the other, taking a little bit, slip in here, just a little of this place here and a little place here. And the first thing you know, it's got the whole thing in a confusion. But what I pray to God, that during this time of this old fashion rally that we are having here, that men will forget all the traditions and all the things that has hindered and lay aside every weight and come back to an old fashioned meeting where people will get, will be born again. I pray that God will give us hundreds of spirit filled people at the altar there praying through to God of a sinner than thing that comes in during this meeting. Oh, what a difference. Now, people, I love you all. You embraced me as your brother when I was one born out of season, but I'm responsible, and I believe that we're entering the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that we are at the end time. You know, Jesus preached the acceptable year. Then after his preaching, come the Jubilee. We've had a great outpouring here. In these last days, God has met with us with old fashion meetings across the country and i believe we are now just at the end of that i believe we're at the end of the road waiting for the coming of the lord jesus i think what the next thing we're waiting for is a bringing together of all god's people that's been strayed away and different things that's taken us captivity for instance some of our morals of our church years ago when mrs mcpherson stood at this pulpit and others up and down, and this one-eyed colored man down here in Azusa Street, they preached the old-fashioned gospel, and men and women lived like godly people. Great things taken, 
please and today we let down the bars for instance not to hammer i don't believe in that but brother i believe that we are here today and the holy spirit is among these 5000 better people sitting here and we at one this one gathering here if we'd only let god have his way in every heart it will start a revival that the people will pack it from sea to sea and from coast to coast back to the old healing lines the devils took many of us captive years ago it was a sin for you women to cut your hair but today pentecostal women look just like the women of the street you can't tell the difference that's right it was it used to be it was a sin back in the old days the old days for women to wear makeup and today you can't tell the sinner from the saint what's the matter back to the old healing line again back to real pentecost back to the old as experience back to that's right that and then some of you preachers that let down the bars and some of you men why you know i'm ashamed of you any man would that calls himself a born again child of god would let his wife act and do the the way the pentecostal people let their women act today it shows that is very not very much man about you that's exactly the truth what we need today brother is a calling back to the old-fashioned baptisms of the holy ghost and people is right back then amen that's the truth brother it may scorch a little bit but i'd rather be scorched here than burn if the devil has took you captive it's jubilee time it's time to come back to the old experience again back to the old-fashioned bible back to the place where we can feel the power of god surge through that will call men and women to the altar that will make them stay on their face all night long and pray to god and seek for deliverance amen what a time i tell you mrs mcpherson gone on many of the old timers have gone on but if there was such a thing that they could look over the banisters of glory today then holler amen to that as certainly as i'm standing here that's right back to the old healing line again back to pentecost what we need to do is get rid of a lot of our fancy fandangles and get back to the bible and back to the old-fashioned holy ghost and back to the place where man and woman look and act and walk like christians amen you might think i'm a little excited i am just a little crazy but i tell you i love to be this way some time ago going down the streets here in los angeles i seen a man had a sign on the front of him that he said i'm a fool for christ and on his back he said who's fool are you so i'd rather i'd rather i'd just rather be a fool for christ than be a fool for the devil anytime what we need today ministers what we need today brothers and sisters is this one thing the devil has got into our church and got us all formally indifferent what we need is a calling back what we need is an old-fashioned gathering together again the sounding of the jubilee the pouring forth of the holy ghost the outcoming of the spirit amen sure it is caused to come back to the prayer meeting it's true we have just begun to fashion off just like the world do just the same things the world does how it happens is a lot of hollywood evangelism and a lot of television staying home at night watching television instead of going to prayer meeting watching who loves susie who loves lucy and all that kind of stuff and staying away from the word of god and stay from the church and i tell you brother that's the reason you know that's the truth god help us today to come back to the old-fashioned pentecost experience of the baptism of the holy ghost and a lot of that cause the pastor let down the bars too that's exactly right lady yes sir what we need today is a calling out calling out pulling out jubilee old-fashioned revival is what we need that is true sinners whipping their way through to Calvary. Yeah, some time ago, a member of a certain big church, certain denomination of Pentecostal, the man wanted to come into a fellowship of the church and didn't want to do it public. And the deacons too came into the fellowship behind the curtains. What he ought to be done is kicked out behind the curtains to the altar is what we need today to call back a real Pentecostal experience. We need it again. We don't need a new Angelus Temple. We don't need new churches. We got some of the finest churches that stands and swell today. We don't need a new Angelus Temple. The thing we need is a revival in the Angelus Temple. What we need today 
is a revival in Pentecost. We don't need a new Pentecostal denomination. No, sir, God forbid, we don't need a new denomination, but we need to revive what we have already denominated. That's exactly what we need is a good old-fashioned revival. God knows that's true. Then you'll see the powers of God move down one more time, and there'll be a sound of the mother bushes and the Holy Spirit moves before spirit-filled messages and spirit-filled people as they go to the world to preach the gospel. We are indeed grateful for what he has done. We are thankful for all these things. But brother, sister, what I mean today, we need a rededication. We need a re-pouring out and what a beautiful time it would be this afternoon when thousands of people are gathered here in this beautiful temple and how that if we could rededicate our lives again and purpose in our hearts that we are going home, wash our face, clean up, and not only our face, but our souls, and not in Los Angeles water, but in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of God, and start a new life over again. That's what we need today, washing the blood of the lamp. Yes, sir. What a picture, what a time, what a why. I don't want to keep you long, but I tell you, friends, what we need today is some good, old-fashioned, long-staying meetings. Why? Back in the early days, when I read the books of the Pentecost, they preached all night, prayed all night. What a time that was. And while we fallen away, God's just as willing to pour out his Holy Spirit on the audience today as he was any other time through the age. God's got every rain barrel full if you've got a heart to receive it. That's right. Amen. We've seen the signs and wonders. I thank God for all the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. I thank God for every person that speaks with tongues. I thank God for every person that interprets every gift of healing, every prophecy, everything that God has done, every pastor, every evangelist, every member of his body. I thank God for it. But what we need today is a rededication, a coming back together, a moving back to the old path. And brother, if we don't do it in another 50 years, or he won't stand that long, but if we could stay another 10 years, what will it be if we don't come together right quick and get back to the old hearing lines again, come back to the old-fashioned Azusa Street Pentecostal revival, we have got to have it. If you could only think of how glorious the Lord Jesus Christ is to us, what he has done for us, how he's been long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance. Sometime ago in a little city where I was in, we were holding a meeting. I had to stay out in the country, and when I was been eating at a nice little place, and I looked at that, the Sunday came, and they closed up and went to church. They were uh, dunkards. And that afternoon, or right after lunch, I kind of felt hungry, and I thought I should have a sandwich. I stepped across the street to an ordinary little restaurant. It was a disgrace to walk into the place. There I was standing there, the law playing a slot machine when gambling is illegal in that state but the law playing a slot machine now you could see how that degrades the law of our nation how that was in my eyes to see that the law that we respect and should be upheld and to see the law itself turning around playing slot machines that's the same thing that the unbeliever sees the christian acting like the world that's the same impression it puts upon them I noticed back in the corner a young lady, very foully dressed, and when she came down to wait on the tables, the boys, the way they were carrying on, I looked, setting to my right, an elderly lady could have been my grandmother, setting there, immorally dressed, kind of a blue-looking lipstick. Now, anybody know that a normal person don't have blue lips, but they had blue-looking lipstick on? And that manicure ever what you call all over her eyes and she was sitting there with two old men and I thought my God how can you stand to look down up upon such and the Lord called me behind the door and I saw a vision I saw the world and it was turning and I saw that my sins and another sins was going I thought God why don't you just blow the place up how can you stand it but then I seen around the world was a crimson stream. I seen the 
Lord, you are standing there in all of his pity as he looked down upon the earth, and I seen my sins as they went to him, but his blood acts like a bumper before God. They could not come to him, and I seen every time I'd do anything wrong, his blood would stand between me and the judgments of God. I walked up to him. I said, Lord, in a vision, I said, is my sins doing that? I said, then forgive me, God. I didn't mean to do it. And he struck his hand in the side, reached over, and got a little book that my name was written on, all full of sin, and wrote pardoned across it, and told it back behind him in the sea of forgetfulness. He said, now I forgive you your sins, but what are you saying about that woman? When I come to out of the vision, I went down and sat down to her. I said, lady, I was you ever a Christian? She said, why are you asking me that for? I began to speak to her, and she told me a heartbroken story of how some things come up in the church, and she was called and went out of the church. She had taken a wrong road. She had two daughters, and they were nice ladies. And how she was there with those two drunken men that afternoon, I told her what the Lord Jesus had showed me, that he still loved her. I reached across the table, caught her by the hands, and said, Lady, I don't care what you have done. Christ will love you. Right out from behind that table, she went. In the middle of that floor, the cop took off his hat and all the rest of them, and we had an old-fashioned prayer meeting there, and she was liberated and brought back to Christ. It was a jubilee, friends. The jubilee is on. It's time for men and women to come back to Christ. Here not long ago in Switzerland, standing up there in the big high Alps mountains, I was thinking of Arnold von Wenclyde. Many of you know the story, what a gallant hero he was many years ago in Switzerland, and how that the Swiss mission was being invaded by a mighty army, and the city was being taken, and the gallant blood of the Swiss people congregated from the mountains into the valley with such little weapons as they could defend themselves with. And when they stood there on the field, and they looked approaching them, and when they were approaching this great army, they were outnumbered fifty to one. And they were, they weren't soldiers, they weren't trained, they didn't know what to do. But this army that was invading was well trained, every man like a brick wall coming right in. And when they were standing there with their spears moving up, one great man stepped out, Arnold von Winkleide, and as he stepped out there in the presence, they were helpless. Everything they could think of was lost. They would simply have to go down, and their homes would be lost. Their families would be killed. Their fatherlands would be destroyed. There was nothing they could do. It was hopeless. And then Arnold von Winkleide stepped out and said, Swiss brethren, this day I'll give my life for Switzerland and the homelands. He said, what will you do? He said, down in the valley yonder is a lovely little home where my wife and little children are waiting for me to come back, and they'll never see me again, for this day I shall give my life for my country. And as he said that, they said, what will you do? And he said, now every one of you that's got weapons, come follow me and do the best you can. Fight with what you've got, do everything you can with what you have got to do with. And he screamed, threw up his weapon, he, and said, make way for liberty. And he started towards the army, and he went right towards the thickest of the spears, and when he got right down to where they was, hundred gleaming spears to cut him, as he came, he threw up his hands and said, make way for liberty. And he grabbed big armfuls of those spears and threw them into his chest, and each one of them, three soldiers, followed Behind him, he broke the ranks of the enemy, and they won the victory like has never been won before. And today, we can mention his name in Switzerland, and the eyes will color, up, will color with tears, and the cheeks will flush for the hero. That was one of the greatest heroes, in my opinion, that's been in army life. But that's a, just a minor thing, just a minor thing. One day when the family of Adam was standing defeated, law, prophet, and everything had failed, Every approach we had made had totally failed, 
and yonder in glory there was one stepped out called the Son of God. And the angel said, What will you do? He said, I'll go down and give my life on this day. I will redeem the fallen sons of Adam. And he came to Calvary. He went to the thickest of the spears. He went through the valley of the shadow of death and caught every dart of the devil and pulled it into his own bosom and called for the church to take what you've got and do the best you can. Praise God. On the day of Pentecost, a rushing mighty wind fell out of the heavens above and armed every man with a weapon. And I say today, my brethren, that every man, whatever you got, let's do the best we can with what we got and fight to the last man because we got the enemy's line broke. Christ de defeated Satan, stripped him of everything he ever had, and he's nothing today but a bluff. When he tells you we can't have another old-fashioned Holy Ghost that's fallen of the Spirit, we can have it today because the lines of the enemies broke and God rules and reigns today. Hallelujah. I'm glad for an old-fashioned Holy Ghost experience of the living God. How this great warrior of Christ broke the way and put the enemy to rout and those brethren on the day of Pentecost, when the number 50, there's something about 50 that brings jubilee. And when they broke the enemy's lines there, they cut away as an example that you and I today can have an old-fashioned Pentecostal revival again. Brethren and sisters, the hour is growing late. It's later than you think. As Brother Mo once said up in Finland, when we were up there right after the war, they were working day and night. Women out in the fields were going along with a harrow. They couldn't take time to disc the ground. They had just had to pull the harrow to scratch it. Winter time was coming on. And they little children worked night and day. At night time, they'd pack the lantern in front of father and mother, pulling the harrow. They just had to scratch the ground the best they could to get the seed in. If they didn't get the seed in, the snows was going to come, and winter would catch them, and they'd all perish the next year from starvation. They had to get the seed in the ground. My brother, sister, if we don't scratch quickly, and get the seed of God into the ground, what's the harvest going to be? We've got to go forth with another old-fashioned pouring out of the Holy Ghost and men and women back to God again of this country and this church, and Pentecost and all is lost. If we don't get back to the seed and the word of God again and an old-fashioned revival, do you believe it today? Do you believe that God would pour it out? Oh my, I feel today led in my soul to take this proposition with the people. I believe if every one of us in this building today will rededicate our life to God and will, as Jacob was told by the Lord, to wash up his, get his people to clean themselves up to present themselves before the Lord. I believe if we'll clean ourselves up from all our evil thinking, from all of our self of our selfishness, from all of our backbiting, from all of our acts of this life, and come boldly before the throne of God. I believe an old-fashioned revival will break out right here in Angela's temple, and one week will never stop it. That's why it will just keep going. Do you believe it? Let us stand to our feet just a moment. You can never make an altar call in a place of this type. There's not enough room for it, but your heart is the altar. Your heart is where God lives. I wonder today if there's people standing here who has never received the Holy Ghost. You have heard all about these great things taking place, but you have never as yet received it. Would you raise your hands to God and say, I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Would you raise your hands all around, over the balconies, everywhere? God bless you. How many here that never received Christ as personal Savior would you raise your hands? Are you concerned enough about your eternal destination to raise your hands to God? Would you do it? God bless you. How many here that already received the Holy Ghost and wants to dedicate their life anew today to Christ? Raise your hands. The Lord God bless you. I believe on after the acceptable year of the Lord had been preached when they gathered together at Pentecost in the temple, they were believers. They were in one place, in one accord. And how appropriate 
to this meeting with this this afternoon when believers from all parts of the country has gathered at the temple again all in one place in one accord what a wonderful time it will be for our outpouring of the holy ghost to come down in our midst this afternoon sharing those messages a while ago given if god gives you the message you're speaking with tongues do it if god has give you put in your hands to interpret do it if god put in your hands to testify do it if god put in your hands to preach preach what you've got let go christ broke the lines and let's go get the victory for our lord jesus christ let us raise our hands now to god and thank god and praise him our heavenly father we thank you today for the pouring of the holy ghost we are believing lord for a great meeting lord for a great moving among the people i ask you today to grant these blessings god and may they see a great time of fellowship in jesus christ's name god hear your people audience is out in radio land you should be here to watch these more than 5000 people with their hands up praising the lord jesus we are having an old fashioned jubilee come out and join us everybody praising the lord giving god praise for the old time religion again in this modern world where we are living where men are perverted their minds are evil thinking juvenile delinquency creeping up everywhere yet in the midst of it all god's pouring out his holy spirit day after day night after night and only even right here in this afternoon at angelus time for the holy spirit here how god is here to bless the people and you in radio land as you are wasn't aware much that we are still on the radio but you in radio land you should come and see this what's going on here such a great gathering of God's people, such a unity of spirit. There's different denominations, barriers are broken down, everybody's standing with one heart and one accord, receiving Christ Jesus. What a marvelous time. Oh, let us open up our hearts, let us raise our voices, our hands, our hearts to Christ and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the outpouring. If you are determined to receive it, if you really want it, but you've got to hunger and thirst for it before, you can never get it. For the Bible said, Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Radio KSFG announcement is given by an announcer and thy nation. Heavenly Father, as we leave the air, we pray that the Holy Ghost will catch fire out here in this city and around over the country and bring us back another old fashioned revival. And that the power of God will fall into the meeting, fill all the sick and all the afflicted everywhere, Lord, and get glory out of the services through Jesus' name.